In this video, we're going to take a look at how thinking with maths can help us to gain a much better understanding of something which completely defeats our intuition if we're not careful. It involves some probability, and as always, there's an important question we have to ask when looking at percentages. We're going to look at an example based on polygraphs or lie detectors, but the same maths applies to medical screening tests, risk assessments, jury verdicts, and more besides, so it's pretty important stuff. The problem is that when we first see the questions, our intuition jumps in because they look so obvious, but we can easily misjudge the situation if we don't stop and use some maths. Polygraphs can measure blood pressure, breathing rate, pulse rate, and the conductivity in your skin, which is a guide to how much you're sweating. The theory is that when we tell a lie, we get stressed about it, and this can generate changes in those sorts of physiological measures. By asking a series of control questions requiring truthful or lied responses, a skilled operator may be able to find correlations between changes in measurements obtained when lying or telling the truth and use those patterns to assess whether or not it's likely that someone is lying when other questions are asked. There are a number of issues which can affect the reliability of interpretation of the measures. For example, some people are very nervous about being falsely accused of lying or anxious about talking about certain topics, whilst others may have psychopathic tendencies, which could suppress their emotional responses altogether. Other people can also train themselves to deliberately generate or stop some of the physical symptoms while sitting a test. Quite apart from this, even if a test is 95% accurate, we have no way of knowing if we're looking at one of the accurate assessments or the incorrect ones. And anyway, that 95% is just an average, and some days would be better than that, and some days worse. Without getting too bogged down in what all the reasons are for assessments going wrong, we're going to use several assumed levels of accuracy in different examples and see how the results measure up. Let's start with an example in which a lie detector is known to be 90% accurate in detecting truth and lies. That means if someone is telling the truth, the test correctly decides that they're telling the truth 9 times out of 10, and incorrectly states that they're lying the other time out of 10. It also correctly identifies a lie 9 times out of 10 and mistakes a lie for a truth 1 time out of 10. It seems pretty clear that this is going to be quite a reliable test to use to tell if someone is lying or not. 90% reliable. In fact, the reliability of the results also depends very much on the rate of the lying in the population that you're testing, as we'll see. If we set out our calculations and results in a simple two-way table, it helps us to see what is going on. Let's carry out 100,000 tests on a population in which half of them tell lies and the other half tell the truth. Then the polygraph will correctly identify 90% of the 50,000 lies as lies, but incorrectly say that 10% of the lies are truthful. Likewise, it will correctly say that 90% of the 50,000 true statements are the truth, and incorrectly say that 10% of them are lies. Overall then, it identifies 50,000 statements as being true, although 5,000 of them are actually lies. This means that if you sat the test and it assessed you as lying, there's a 45,000 out of 50,000 chance, 90%, that you lied, and a 10% chance that you told the truth. 90% of the assessments are correctly identified, and that matches the chances of being correct, whether it said you were lying or telling the truth. Our intuition worked. Now let's carry out another 100,000 of the same test, but on a generally much more honest population, in which 90% of the statements are actually truthful. So that's 90,000 true statements, and only 10% are actually lies. So that's 10,000 lies. Now it will correctly say that 90% of the 90,000 true statements are true. That's 81,000. But it will incorrectly say that 10% of them, 9,000, are lies. It will also correctly say that 90% of the 10,000 lies are lies, that's 9,000, and incorrectly say that 10% of the lies are truthful statements, that's 1,000. In this scenario, our test has indicated that there are 18,000 lies, but that figure is made up of 9,000 actual lies and 9,000 wrongly assessed truthful statements. Because so many more people are telling the truth in our population, the incorrectly identified 10% of them amount to the same as the number of correctly identified lies. When talking about percentages, you must always ask, percentage of what? The problem is that we don't know which individual cases are correctly identified lies and which are wrongly identified truths. This means that if you sat the test and it indicated that you have told a lie, there's only a 50% chance that you actually did tell a lie. It also means that if the test said you told the truth, then there's a 99% chance that you really did. The test still correctly identified truth or lie in 90% of cases, but that's a different matter to the likelihood of being correct if it said you lied or told the truth, because of the imbalance of truth and lies in the population. The raw reliability percentage of the test is only part of the question, because if there's a vastly different number of actual true statements and lies, then you can find, as we just did, that a small percentage of a large number can be equal to, or even greater than, a large percentage of a small number, 
and one of the categories can be made up of lots of misidentified cases. Let's look at a more complicated but quite possibly realistic case. Let's imagine our test is 90% accurate at identifying lies, but only 70% accurate at identifying true statements. Again, we'll say that we'll do 100,000 tests, and in only 10% of cases is someone actually lying. Now we can see that the test correctly identifies 9,000 of the lies, 90% of 10,000, but it also mistakenly labels 27,000 of the true statements as lies, 30% of 90,000. It correctly says that 63,000 of the 90,000 true statements are true, 70%, and mistakenly says 1,000 of the 10,000 lies are true, 10%. Filling in the totals, we can see that now only a quarter of the cases identified as being lies are actually lies. And again, we've got no way of knowing which ones are which. In this set of tests, if the polygraph says you're lying, there's only a 25% chance that you actually are lying, even though the test is 90% accurate in identifying lies. This is, again, because the set of results is messed up by the fact that so many of the statements are true, and so many of those statements get incorrectly labelled as lies. The knock-on effect of this is that if the test says you're telling the truth, then there's a 98% chance that it's right, even though it only spots 70% of truths in general. We can also see that the overall accuracy of the test is 72%, because it correctly allocates 72,000 out of the 100,000 statements. Let's summarise how to think about problems like this. 1. Conduct a theoretical experiment with, say, 100,000 cases, and work out how many would actually be lying or telling the truth. 2. Draw up a simple two-way table. 3. Work out how many cases go into each box, correctly identified truths and lies, and then incorrectly identified truths and lies. 4. Add up the columns and rows to get totals. 5. The test identifies some statements as true. Work out what percentage of these cases are actually true statements. It also identifies some statements as lies. Work out what percentage of these cases are actually lies. There, now you understand some conditional probability and can find your way around some pretty tough problems. Well done. Now pause the video and have a go at answering the following question. If you need a hint, then let the video run a little longer and it will draw the two-way table for you. If you leave it running even longer, it will give you the answer. A lie detector test is 80% accurate at identifying true statements or lies. In our tests, 25% of people actually lied, while the others all told the truth. If the test identified someone's statement as being a lie, what is the probability it's actually a lie? If the test identified someone's statement as being true, what is the probability it's actually true? As before, our two-way table has truth and lie across the top, and correctly and incorrectly identified down the side. Let's imagine 100,000 tests, and the 25% lie rate means 75,000 actually told the truth, and 25,000 actually lied. 80% of the 25,000 lies are correctly identified, that's 20,000. The remaining 20% of lies are misjudged to be the truth, that's 5,000. 80% of the 75,000 truths are correctly identified, that's 60,000. The remaining 20% of truths are misjudged to be lies, that's 15,000. In total, the test says there are 65,000 true statements and 35,000 lies, and correctly identifies 80,000 of the 100,000 statements, so it has an 80% accuracy rate. Looking at the lies, 20,000 of the 35,000 statements identified as lies are actually lies, so there's a 57% chance someone is lying if the test says they're lying. Looking at the true statements, 60,000 of the 65,000 statements identified as true are actually true, so there's a 92% chance someone is telling the truth if the test says they are telling the truth. Now pause the video again and have a go at answering the next question. If you need a hint, then again, let the video run a little and it will draw the two-way table for you. If you leave it running even longer, again, it will give you the answer. A test has been developed which is 99% accurate in identifying whether or not you have Lurgy disease. Only 0.5% of people tested actually suffer from Lurgy disease, so it's quite rare, although not very nice. If you take the test and it says you have Lurgy disease, it's tempting to say that because the test is 99% accurate, then it's 99% likely that you have Lurgy disease. That isn't the case. So how likely is it that you would actually have the disease if your test came back saying you had Lurgy? Now the two-way table has diseased and healthy across the top and correctly and incorrectly identified down the side. 
Let's imagine 100,000 tests and the 0.5% disease rate means that 500 people actually have Lurgy and the other 99,500 don't. 99% of the healthy 99,500 people are correctly identified by the test as healthy. So that's 98,505. The other 1% of healthy people are incorrectly identified as having Lurgy. So that's 995 people. 99% of the 500 people who actually have Lurgy are correctly identified as having the disease. That's 495 people. The other 1% with Lurgy are incorrectly identified as being healthy. That's five people. Overall, the test says that 1,490 people have Lurgy and 98,510 are healthy. It correctly allocates 99,000 out of the 100,000 tested, so it has a 99% accuracy rate. Of the 1,490 people who the test says have Lurgy, only 495 actually do. That's a 33% likelihood of having Lurgy if the test says you have it. The question didn't ask for this, but if the test says you are healthy, then there is only a 5 out of 98,510 chance that you actually have Lurgy. That's about 0.005%.